Rachel and Travis. Thank you for joining us and doing a little interview for Geo here. Um, you know, my, my my first question that I had when I when I found out about you guys and heard about you guys, and I think it's probably a lot of people's first questions when they see you know this company louder than ten. Is this a Spinal Tap reference? <laughs> Yes, it is. <laughs> Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It definitely is. Yeah. Very really good. Right? Really different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I came up with it um, years ago out of college on a, on a project for, for design work I was doing. And um, it started off just being my freelance kind of gig. And then it's kind of morph. It's stuck with us through all our morphings of our company through the years. So yeah, it's kind of been with us and kind of takes on new meaning as we go. <laughs> nice. So uh, it, why don't you, you know, introduce yourselves a little bit and, uh, you know, in your company um, and tell people about what you do. Um, for sure. I'll start. So my name is Rachel Gertz. Um, I'm the co-founder, one of the co-founders at Louder Than 10. And I'm also the director of growth and delivery. And um, I'll let you, Travis, introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Travis Gertz. I am also another co-founder and I'm the director of operations and design. Yeah. Okay. And okay. Oh, go ahead. oh, go ahead. I was just going to ask you to expand more on, on, on what you're industry is. So. Absolutely. So uh, at Louder Than 10, we help digital marketing software and creative agencies keep their promises to their teams by running a healthy, sustainable company. Uh, and we do that through project management operations training. So basically helping folks run their projects better, which helps them have a more sustainable, ethically run company. Yeah. Um, when I was, you know, looking through your website and kind of find out about you guys, I it's like, oh, yes, this uh, reminds me of uh, Oli uh, from Isthmus Engineering and Manufacturing. Oh. You know, if you're aware of them, they're a big worker co-op um, who makes like machines that make things, you know, like the engines in your Harley Davidson motorcycle and stuff like that. They make these big machines anyway. Super cool worker co-op. But Oli there was saying uh, at one talk that he gave uh, that, you know, when they started out 40 engineers and and manufacturing guys and it was kind of you know a mess for a while until a couple people went to project management <laughs> training and came back was like guys Whoa. guys <laughs> there's a better way <laughs> um so yeah definitely uh you know very useful uh kind of tools but when i was you know looking through your website it, it seemed like you do a lot more than just consult or you know training people about project management right it seems like there's a little bit more to your kind of education that you do. Is that right? Hey, Trav, did you have anything you want to add there? Um, yeah. So honestly, Rach has probably got the best on this because she is the project manager. But um, one of the big um, things we wanted to do when we started was uh, we just understood that project management was like this weird um, part of a company where it's kind of like the nucleus it controls all the work all the the how much labor gets distributed to people how communicate where communication often comes from and so we wanted to find a way to kind of improve our industry so we started with training and kind of it's just evolved over the years into more consulting and coaching. And um, it started off training individuals as project managers. And now we're training full teams. Um, we just found like the the impact was was much bigger as we kind of expanded our scope there. So yeah, we have a variety of different things for different sizes and, and needs and, and things like that. Yeah, I think yeah. one of the kind of uh, side pieces on that is like, like when we look at encouraging the, the delivery teams to start thinking like owners, even when maybe they haven't moved toward a co-op model at all. They start to understand the language of business. They start to understand how to communicate differently. And they also know how, like what to drive towards. And that's something that most leaders are 
actively seeking from their team. So uh, project management is kind of this like, I don't know, it's like a little bit of a, a an invisible tool when it's working well to be able to actually guide that company in the right direction. And the training uh, gives people the voice they need in order to take their power back uh, in that org. So it's kind of a neat way to distribute that in a more equitable manner. Yeah, and I was, I mean, I was impressed on your website, um, you know, just in, you know, your kind of description of services that you focus not just on like kind of technical aspects, although you have, you know, obviously all of that kind of stuff, but on the human relationship yes. parts that, you know, that often get left out. And, uh, you know, another uh, aspect that I thought was very appropriate for, you know, being a new worker co-op, a newly converted worker co-op, which will certainly talk about, um, but is, you know, that fits in so well with the, you know, just the co-op world and the co-op model is your emphasis on education and not just, as you said, educating one person, but then giving them the skills to educate other team members. So, you know, that's our, you know, one of our principles, of course, you know, continuing education all the time. So that's a, yeah, it seems like a, a perfect fit. Um, and we should probably talk a, a little bit about your so first off, tell me about the specific type of companies that you work with um, and just so people can get an idea of what, of what type of projects and stuff you guys are, are helping out with. Um, and then, you know, uh, talk a little bit about how you uh, came to convert to a, a worker co-op model. Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah, so go ahead. Yeah. Um, I can talk a little bit about the first question. So um, we work with a lot of digital agencies. I would describe ourselves as a digital co-op like we're very much working with folks who make things that are not tangible um, when they come out they're still online somewhere so if they make websites or applications or they're designing marketing campaigns or they're supporting uh, in terms of just creating branding or um, yeah branding and positioning uh, documents and things like that so it's a very specific niche but the thing is is a lot of folks who work in those industries that connect with everybody else. So if you're a product company, you you have a department that will do that. Or if you're uh, a service company that like makes tile, for example, you're still going to probably have a creative department or a mini team that is going to be uh, able to benefit from those kinds of uh, services. So we we really niche down in terms of our our focus and work specifically with those those software companies that that do that type of work as a service for their clients and or internal teams if they are. Right. Yeah. I I know there's um there's actually uh, here in the U.S. I don't know how it is in Canada, but um that type of industry there are a lot of uh, worker co-ops uh, in the US that are doing like web design and app design and stuff like that and absolutely and all and all different kinds of you know uh, technical these intangible services and goods and whatnot um okay so uh so yeah why don't you give us a little bit of you know history of your your company which if correct me if I'm wrong, but it has been just the two of you for a while and now has converted uh, officially to a worker co-op structure, if I'm correct. And just want to. Yeah. So um, it started off, um, we actually started as a kind of design agency duo, me and Rachel, um, about, yeah, in 2009. And so we would work with other design agencies doing freelance work. So I was a web designer um, and developer, Rachel, project manager. And so through the years, we were kind of doing that work, but kind of had these experiences from our peers and from working with these agencies where there was a, it was kind of like a benevolent dictatorship feeling where like, you know, there was a lot of false promises that would happen or, um, you know, they would, tr the owners might be like nice people, but then when it came to, um, company decisions and, and when things got a little bit away from their vision or something else like that, that's they, they, the experience would turn bad really quickly or like when things got tough then the layoffs would happen. Um, things just got stressful. People were treated worse and people were overworked. Other people were overworked. And so we just noticed all these bad habits that were present in our industry. Everyone we knew was just you know, working overtime for no extra benefit to, at all. So we hated that. And so um, at the same time, we were kind of competing with a bunch of other web design agencies for the same kind of work. So we decided to do something that played to our strengths a little better. 
in that way. And so Rach also happens to have a teaching degree. So we tried to look at, okay, so project management is our strength. Um, teaching is a strength. And also we noticed like these horrible practices in our industry. And so we started off um, by kind of creating a bit of that, like turning into more of an education company. Um, we've had, we brought on a few people over the years to help with marketing and with training. Um, and so, yeah, 2017, we launched our first course and we very quickly brought on Abby, who is our other, um, she is our third member, our first new co-op member, I guess. So there's the three of us. And so she's been with us for six years now, yeah. Rach, over six years. Um, yeah. And so over this time, um, we didn't really know much about co-ops when we started our company. And then, um, I don't know, it was like working with Abby, working with our teammates, seeing everything in the in the industry we didn't want to produce become what we hated about the, the industry to begin with and so um i i happened to read a book by john abrams called companies we keep mm -hmm. and uh it just chronicles his own journey into becoming a co-op and what it looked like and a lot of the problems they encountered and solved and i just I don't know, we thought it was pretty beautiful and inspiring. And it kind of was a catalyst for like looking into other models and things like that. And then I think eventually we just we reached I reached out to our local provincial co-op uh, association and they kind of they trained us. They provided some co-op developers for us. And then we kind of went from there. It was just for us, it just made ideological sense. It made more sense in um, just hearing about how co-ops were resilient through like hard times, how there were, it just gives you more options and it's a different way to look at business that just kind of was more in line with how we wanted to live. Yeah. And, and who specifically did you work with uh, as a co-op developer there in, in Vancouver, right? Yeah, we worked with, um, Marty Frost, who, um, he's, uh, like a local veteran he's mm -hmm. done so many yeah we, and uh <laughs> you know, guys are familiar. We put an interview with him on the uh yeah. uh, that i think uh yeah amazing yeah he, amazing he's human. absolutely incredible and then also um chris galloway was was also helped us and and those they're still helping us now with some stuff and yeah we love them they're, they're and, great people and, yeah and marty at least i think that it's a worker co-op co-op developer is that right yeah that's right yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah, just yeah. started up uh co-active yeah so. and i think it chad their specific focus is con conversion right is that yeah. kind of their yeah okay. so it's a neat uh, a really uh niche down area really cool to see them developing that and building that uh notoriety up in in canada and beyond so yeah and and so you said you didn't really know much about co-ops um before you read uh you know john's book but um have you gotten more like involved with the co-op uh, community there in in Vancouver? I think they've got you know quite a few different co-op things going on there. I know there's the BC Co-op Association and whatnot. So, um, yeah, you've been doing some of that uh, connecting with other co-ops there. Um, we've been um, so I've been attending. Uh, we both have been attending some meetups and conferences and getting to know the community really well. It's so supportive, um, just online and offline. Just getting to know all the like people who have been this in this for years and been trying different things. So, um, I think in you know our like fourteen years of business, I've never felt more supported in my entire life of, of this, just like people really want you to succeed. And so, um, yeah, the co-op community has been just um, essential for us, I would say. Mm -hmm. And even launching this, like um, whether it's the Canadian Worker Co-op Federation and BC Cooperative Association, they've been helping us like uh, do some push out the push out the message and everything else for us. And and yeah, so it's been it's been amazing and just connecting with some of the other co-ops around and just seeing like what they do and it's not all because of our niche it's not always like a um a direct fit there in that way but even still like the sharing of resources and things like that has been incredibly helpful 
Yeah, yeah that is definitely uh, one of the main <laughs> benefits, I think, um, of that that often goes unmentioned of of organizing as a co-op because you will get so much free business help and advice from people that if mm -hmm. you were just a sole proprietorship, like, yeah, you know, we'll talk to you for, you know, 80 bucks an hour or whatever. So, um, right. yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's great. Um, so what have you, um, what was the conversion process like for you? You know, it sounds like, you know, you were working already for over, you know, five, six years, um, you know, with the person who was, you know, becoming a, an owner. Um, what, what was the, what was the transition process like? Did you, you know, do a lot of education together or, or how did that work? Yeah, we, um, well, we took it pretty slow because we are so for, as a small company we're super busy but and wanted to take our time and do it right and um, it was the middle of a pandemic <laughs> middle of a pandemic <laughs> we, it yeah. was a lot of it was a lot but um yeah so um the bc co-op association had a boot camp so me and rachel attended that which was um nice and helpful um beyond that we did for a little while, I don't think we got through the entire thing, but our team did like a bit of a like reading club for companies we keep at, at some point just to like kind of help educate uh, ourselves. Um, and we've along the way shared a lot of resources and articles and have like a little resource area mm -hmm. on our internal systems here that where we just kind of, yeah, just it was it was nice to see examples of it, both um, worker co-ops and other ways too. seeing like some there's like um uh, cooperation Jackson in Jackson, Mississippi. They're, they're, like, it's just an inspiring story of like how like this community is able to sort of um, kind of take care of themselves and, and despite horrible economic anxiety and, and things like that in the, in the, in the neighborhoods. So um, it was just seeing all of that stuff. I think it was a lot of, yeah, just sharing and having that length of time, I think to do it and, and just keeping it, kind of slow and relaxed gave us like a lot of time and space to sort of like we did some like education about finances to each other like I I taught the team a little bit about um we did some open book management kind of training and so like teaching the team about um cost of goods sold versus uh expenses and things like that and how how everybody contributes to the to the financials of the company so yeah it was like a very fun like I think a lot of a, a pretty good educational experience. <laughs> what do you think, Rach? How was it from yeah. your perspective? Yeah, it was, it was really interesting because I think Chad was initially the person that had kind of been like, hey, like there's this whole other model available to us if we want. And so when I joined the boot camp, I remember just being like, why is this not how all companies run? Like that just makes way more financial sense and it's sustainable. It supports longevity for the company. It, it was just kind of remarkable. And then, and then I think you understand, you start to see how like it's actively not like suppressed, but it's just not mainstream in universities or colleges as much. Right? You don't see it like, like supported from that. So it is, feels very much more grassroots, but I love seeing, I think in our, in Canada, there's like a lot more support coming out for cooperatives and funding related models for that. So I'm, and it was back in the seventies. And then I think it kind of just went down in the eighties and nineties. So I'm really excited actually by seeing how it's like when people come back with you know, challenges to the model, you can just, you point to so much data that's like, well, it just works better. That's just how, you know, we're able to function mm -hmm. more efficiently. It's just good business sense. And then they're like, yeah. oh, I never thought of that. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. It seems like a lot of people um, have a hard time. I know in talking to some, uh, you know, some of my like acquaintances and, and yeah. friends, uh, they just have a hard time wrapping their head around the you can do something, uh, run a complex business um, without uh, a hierarchy, without somebody yeah. making the decisions and telling other people what to do, just because we're so ingrained in doing that of either being the boss or being the employee. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think maybe in, you know, the tech industry, um, it's, 
a, a, a little bit different. I, I mean, it, it, cause they're, like I said, there does seem to be a lot of worker co-ops in tech and um, one of our uh, core members, uh, Jim Johnson, um, he co-wrote a, a little guide quite a while back uh, called a freelancer's guide uh, for creating a worker co-op technology freelancers guide for creating nice. worker co-ops. I mean, it, and um, so I, I don't know, I think maybe there's, you know, it, the, the tech side of things, uh, there seem to be a lot of people um, who kind of get it uh, uh, on a fundamental level a little bit more. Um, Cause I've definitely had people who are like re- managers of restaurants and things be like, are you insane? That would never work. Right. Um, and you know, so yeah, it's always good to have lots of, lots of examples uh, to, uh, to show people. And that's why we like to do yeah. this kind of thing. Um, you know, and, and you know, so you guys are, have done a, you know, this conversion. It was good to hear that you're doing a, a little, your little book club. Um, uh, one of our other members, Jessica Gordon Imhard, uh, wrote a book a while back uh, called Collective Courage about um, African-American uh, cooperatives and the history of, of those here in the U.S. And that was one of her like major takeaways was that successful co-ops start with a book club. Nice. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. That's so cool. um, that's uh, definitely getting off going on the in the right direction there. Um, amazing. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the conversion and your conversions, you know, interesting, something I've noticed because there's been a lot of discussion about conversions with the quote unquote silver tsunami of, of baby boomers. Um, I don't know if that's as big of a thing in Canada as it is here, but, you know, there's going to be so many of the, you know, my parents' generation uh, you know, kind of aging out and everybody's retiring, all the business owners are wanting to get out and, you know, trying to encourage those to get converted to worker co-ops. But I have to say, most of the conversions I seem to come across are people like you who are, you know, younger um, and just seeing the benefits of the model, um, which I think is really great and, you know, is is hopeful for the future. Um, so, okay. yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, I, I tell you, yeah, I just wish I knew a about it when it when we started out like it just um and I think a lot of I do think a lot of um people who start like like you were saying digital companies uh and things like that um they I feel like if they know more about it or if like they would do it more often because I know we we talk to a lot of agency owners and things like that and they all kind of want flatter hierarchies they want like a more like human first uh environment and things like that but they just don't know about it also and like no when you get your lawyer and you get your accountant and all this stuff they either especially if they've never heard of it and you if you mention it they think you're crazy sometimes (laughs) or whatever (laughs) they don't they just don't understand it and so it's it's even just hard to find those like those places to where people can offer it as an as an alternative to you when you're getting started and things like that so there's so much awareness I think that still needs to happen but I like even our own students there's we have like this little this beautiful little community and all of them are like so many are are they're looking for jobs they're looking for things they all have these amazing skills that they could start I'm half the time I'm like y'all should just like get together and start something new instead of like either creating your own individual one or trying to freelance on your own or work for someone else. It's, I think there's a lot of great opportunity there that, you know, it might end up, it's like the perfect kind of middle ground between freelancing, which is so stressful and you have to do everything on your own versus working for someone where you don't have any control over your, your job and your career in the, in those, those elements of your career. So I I just think it's such a nice, like best of both worlds. If you can, if you can get there. Yeah, we, we definitely need some marketing help. If you have any ideas on that as a movement. um, Yes. uh, You know, and I I don't mean to like belittle what we're doing here today or what I do uh, all the time, but frankly, a lot of our, you know, the content that comes out about worker co-ops and about co-ops in general is like a recorded zoom call. Um, you know, it's a, a panel discussion or it's an interview. It's and it's it's often just, you know, unless you're already into it, 
it's, you know, maybe a little bit boring. And I think about like, I'm, I've been thinking like, should we be on like Twitch or something? Do we need to find somebody to like play video games and talk about work or co-op? Yeah, seriously. Like, you know, because it, you know, like I said, it's, it's, if it's a marketing, more problem, people right? know about it, you know, that, yeah. you know, we just need, yeah, need to you get yeah. out of there. So, um, yeah, that's one thing I've often thought about too, just as my exposure has grown a little bit around how there are so many pockets of amazing folks with amazing resources and how it's still very hard to feel connected across those pockets because everyone's doing such great community focused work. And, you know, like that there is almost like this, sometimes it almost feels like we get into a navel gazing mode because we're trying so hard to like work for each other to support one another, right? And so I think that like, even I think louder than 10, we've been exploring this um, sort of way of talking about what we do differently. And it's like, if you're supporting like the main character in the story, like who is, what is their thing that keeps them up at night? What is their like ultimate heartbreak? And then how does being a co-op actually change that for that main character? And what it is, is there's more than one main character, right? They're supporting mm -hmm. characters and then those supporting characters become this community that, that helps. So I think like looking at it through a different lens, maybe something to explore there uh, and finding that solidarity. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, talk a little bit more, maybe Rachel, about the, um, you know, the, the education work that you do with folks. I, I see on your website that you work with a lot of, um, you know, uh, companies of, you know, with looks like, I guess you say anywhere 15 to 100, um, seems like a lot of people. It, it, uh, so, and then it sounds like you also have maybe just some individuals, people, freelancers who are coming to you for education. Um, how yeah. has have you been able to spread the co-op gospel at all through that or how has that gone or is that it, 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 it do the people that you work with um know about your becoming a co-op and okay. yeah yeah there's lots of great questions to unpack in there so um uh let me just first talk about so with the type of work that we're doing we're, we we tend to work with small businesses uh, that are growing and they're focusing on adding new project managers. They're increasing the size of their, their delivery teams. And then part of that um, work then becomes getting them all on the same page about what does it feel like to be happy at work? What does it feel like to feel in control of uh, processes and to feel in, in, you know, kind of like you're all moving in the same direction together. So I think that it provides kind of like, we don't, we don't always talk about this um, directly because sometimes we find that being subtle about it actually Im improves people's understanding and like uh, kind of growing in the in um, co-op knowledge but we see it as like the underbelly of what we do right the the deeper part of the iceberg is like yeah so all of the things that we're working on are like solidarity right and support uh, like allyship and supporting and advocating for better work conditions through project management. And then you go deeper down, down that um, iceberg, we start to, to look at things like equity and, and inclusion and how we can support uh, equal voices at the table. Nothing about us without us, you know, with these kinds of concepts. So we bake it in and we've actually always had it baked in by default. And I think now it gives us a chance to be able to um, offer that to folks as a, di a direction or an option if they so choose, um, because we don't want to force anyone into a model. It doesn't work for some agencies it just doesn't doesn't work and so some might be really interested in it and others might not but I do think that it gives us a, a, a platform to talk about and one thing I've noticed and Trav you can speak to this but our community has been very supportive and it's like you know over 200 folks uh, that have gone through courses and companies that have gone through courses courses and training it's like they are really excited because they're seeing and feeling a direct impact in their own worker environment. It's like hustle culture, that whole thing, I think there was like coined because of a digital agency, like lifestyle is just so, is grinding people out and they're so tired. Everyone's so tired. So I don't know, Trav, what do you think? Yeah, I I, I agree. Like, um, I think we have like a, a Slack uh, group with our community in there and stuff. We'll often post um, like news and updates about our own conversion, things like that. Um, sometimes some news that's sort of applicable to digital agencies and, and cooperatives and everything. It's all with that sort of underlying kind of 
democracy at work kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and like we've, we've had Chris Galloway, our other co-op developer in for an ask me anything kind of session. So it was a Zoom session like this with our community. I think it was the most engaged one we've had in like five or six years of doing them. Like the questions that were coming out of it were wild, like insane. And like, and every, everyone's just so interested in it. And there's so much interest, especially from the workers themselves. And we have had, like, we did have one of our clients actually did friendly uh, design co yeah, um, is, I think they're in the process of converting. They may have finished it. I, I think they just finished. Yeah. I think they may have just finished converting because of us, I think too. And so they saw what we were doing. And so, yeah, it's definitely, um, you know, creating some kind of influence there. And and that's, that's the goal I think for us too, is we want, we want to make it seem um, easy and possible and, and do that. And so um, one of the upcoming projects that uh, me and Chris have talked about is actually just like finding ways to share the things that we've learned and like push out templates, especially because we have built like a lot of like internal digital tools, even just for things to help with governance and tracking, um, resolutions. tracking equity and, yeah. and resolutions and all those kinds of things. And so it's like trying to just like, make it easy for other people to to do this stuff and to understand the process and everything else i think that helps to that little educational component all right um well that's that's excellent hearing about uh friendly friendly design what is it friendly design yeah washington dc yeah, yeah yeah okay oh great in washington dc that's we've got a couple of members in that nice. area um i'll have to mention that to them um yeah, because, you know, reading like some of the descriptions of the clients that you'd work for um, definitely sounded, you know, very progressive forward thinking companies, I would imagine with your kind of pitch that you're, mm -hmm. you know, you're probably not going to get the the super evil capitalist <laughs> companies are not going to be hiring you in the first place. So yeah. um, and you probably can't be uh, too, as I thought about, you know, my question a little bit more trying to, you know, educate people at work co-op sites thought like well maybe you can't be too overt about trying to like headhunt for the co-op movement with your when you're training people from companies um but you yeah. know there's of course there's always the layoffs as you say there's a lot of turnover in the industry so it's like next time you're looking for a job they'll at least know like oh hey there's that co-op you know they yeah do that. i think our community is probably one of the best possible places to look for folks who are you know, interested, passionate about these types of things. And I think, yeah, specifically we would, we would want to reach out to them as we grow and provide opportunities. We've, we've talked about, we haven't formalized this, but talked about even just like creating transition to ownership related material that helps people think like, what is it to be a, a member, you know, a member mm -hmm. owner, what does that mean and how does that work? So just supportive, if anybody actually has that in existence already, like, and that's something that you want to uh, talk about with us or partner with on us, let me, let me know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there are certainly, um, you know, educational materials that, you know, have been produced by uh, GEO um, and uh, the Association for Cooperative Educators, which is actually a uh, headquartered i think in canada and um and and tessa which is a worker co-op that makes uh kind of educational board games uh we all got a grant um a couple of grants from the cynix harvest states foundation several years ago to create um ed.coop which nice. is a, a good a good resource i'll just plug that here ed.coop yeah. um and uh that was you know part of our idea or a lot of our idea is just trying to get like the best educational resources that we could find that were available publicly and, and kind of put them all together. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's always uh, a need for new stuff out there. Um, and, uh, and a lot of it is, is very specific, you know, it's like you guys, you know, work in a very specific industry and, you know, maybe, you know, some of the things that you guys do are, are very specific to that. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of things like if you want to know how to start a home care cooperative doing home health care, like I have the perfect thing for you. Nice. If you're not, you know, you get doing something that's not quite that well, there's maybe some useful information in there, but um, so, so 
Um, but yeah, there's, you know, there's, uh, um, there's lots of, lots of information out there. I'm definitely, uh, more than happy to share anything that I know of and always happy to learn about new stuff. Um, Fantastic. so, um, how have you, so how, let's talk a little bit just about, um, before we wrap up here, just about how you guys, just with the three of you, how you organize your like decision-making and stuff like that. Um, did it change very much from how you were doing things before to how you're doing things now? And do you have a formal process that you use? It's not, you mentioned tracking resolutions. So it sounds like there's, you yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's funny. Like, um, I, I think this is like a part of the, the re, like we're so small there's always been like between three to five people in our company and so it always has been very kind of democratic by default in a lot of ways and so um, it was very natural I think for us to to move to the co-op part and the biggest thing was we wanted to, so we knew we had to track resolutions and and really kind of like formalize part of that. Some, we, we kind of, as a project company, management company too, we're already good at like tracking work and tasks and things like that and organizing projects and everything. And so this was sort of like a bit of a natural extension. We even used our same tools to kind of just, um, make a few new systems to help formalize it. And it's just booking um, the regular meetings in and making sure that like, okay, we're tracking the decision-making process just a little more clearly. But um, so we've always, even from the start, we wanted to make sure that we are um, balancing um, the transparency and recording of everything while being still lean and being able to make decisions quickly and to, to be dynamic and everything. So we've tried to, work really hard to just you know make everything digital make it like quick to sign off on things make it quick to read up on things have everything kind of linked together so we have notes on a meeting tied to a resolution and all of that kind of thing to to just keep that paper trail as easy and smoothly as possible for us so yeah it went it was pretty good pretty it's been yeah pretty smooth have you, have you adopted any like kind of formal process like sociocracy or consensus or robert's rules or whatever we maybe in, informally have adopted only because we are only three folks but i think as we scale and grow i think that's going to be something that we want to explore even more deeply but i we're familiar mm -hmm. with like sociocracy and like the solidarity economy the, the i love the article the, like, the booklet that you folks put together i was like checking it out it's really cool stuff um so i think we'll be exploring a bit more in depth in terms of what alignment we have but yeah there's mm -hmm. so much good stuff out there yeah. The other thing is like, um, this goes back to our approach to training as well, is that kind of every company, like this is with project management, um, there's frameworks for that. And we think like, it's rare that um, a company needs to be strict in one, it's usually some combination of things that works. And I think we're sort of going through that same process of figuring out like, okay, this element from here really works with our type of company right now. And so we're still sort of yeah, probably picking up on some of those pieces and we'll develop it a little more as we go. But yeah, it's always kind of like what what works out there and what what makes sense for our our system. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I guess just to, to wrap us up here, uh, last question. What question should I have asked that I failed to ask? And then uh, go ahead and answer it. Ooh. OK, I don't know. Jeff, do you have one? Because I have one. OK, I was thinking. Um, like what's been what's been the most difficult part of converting to a co-op um i think that this is something where if you're okay with it i can get a little vulnerable here um so chav and i have been uh together for 25 years and we've been married for 15 or 16 16 15 anyway we've been married for a long time uh introducing a cooperative model means that we have to very much zoom out and look at the dynamics of relationship because we have relationship with Abby, our trainer, but she is, it's a professional relationship. She's in Philly and then there's Trav and I were on site. So there's like dynamics that you don't even realize play into power and play into decision-making. And so for us, it has been 
And for me specifically too, like a complete overhaul of how I trying to show up at work, what work I'm taking with me, what's, what conversations we are accidentally having outside of work, because we're just, we just forget we're having dinner and we're like, oh yeah, so that invoice, right? So it's been a really, um, I'd say a radical change in how we're showing up at work. And I'm not saying that we're hundred percent perfect at it. I think it's been an evolution, but I think that this process, like I never would have expected the that by us coming together and making this like um very strong you know intentional change to our to the way we show up in our company has had such a massively positive impact in our lives and and how we um in our vulnerability and our ability to look at healing and growing as people i am so proud of my my partners my like trav my and Abby as my worker partners and you Trav as my partner, like, it's just a lot of work has to go in, I think. And I don't know that the average bear thinks about that um, when they're making that kind of change, because, you know, we always try to separate relationship. It's like, well, that's, that's life and home and this is business, but it all bleeds. It all bleeds. And you are, you are facets and versions of yourself in the home and at work. And you can't just draw a line between those neatly. So I just have a lot of um, compassion for people doing this kind of work, love empathy and a lot of pride in the work we've put in because it's not an easy thing to do. Yeah. And a lot of therapy just to like, you know, <laughs> a lot of therapy. <laughs> figure out, <laughs> learn how to, learning how to communicate. And like, yeah, yeah. That, that's, I think it's been, um, yeah, it's, it's special to um, uh, develop those skills and, and everything. Cause they are just like, they do make us better humans, I think. And yeah. once we can kind of like show that vulnerability and improve that communication and everything else. So, yeah. 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 It really, really helped us like, kick off a new version of ourselves in general yeah no that's i mean it's something i wouldn't think about but it's like well you know it could be beneficial to not let your work life bleed so much into the rest of your life when you've got like oh well this is <laughs> we got yeah. somebody else who needs to be in this conversation so totally like hey that's a good excuse um yeah. Yeah. to focus on your other stuff so yeah yeah um great well travis do you have a something you'd think I should have asked or would like to add before we wrap up oh I mean that was I don't think I could um top that last question honestly <laughs> All right. yeah great um well thanks for uh taking the time and um yeah best of luck with everything and thanks, uh, yeah, if you uh have any anything you think we can help you with, we will let you know. And, uh, and, and do you work only with people in, um, oh no, I guess you said you, it, that, that new co-op is in DC. So you work with people outside Canada yep, all over the all right, world. Well, yeah. We can recommend you. I'm, I know for a fact, there are several worker co-ops that could probably use, you know, some training in this kind of stuff. Um, you know, okay. because it, like I said, people are, you get busy doing your business and, uh, and a lot of this kind of stuff that seems superfluous or extraneous yeah. uh, gets put off until it's, you know, starts causing issues. So uh, yeah, um, yeah, definitely it's a, a needed service. So. Yeah. It's your super glue. Yeah, it keeps everything working well. So. All right. Great. Well, Thanks so much, Josh. It was great chatting with you. Yeah, thank you. These go to 11.